So people ask me all the time, you know, how do we innovate on so many different fronts? Um, how do we work with companies? How do we partner with them? People have all these questions, you know, how do you go from product design to doing more than that, to communicating, to creating the graphics and the packaging for these companies? Um, and, you know, uh, in, in many ways for us, uh, this has come about because we've had to design absolutely everything, the way we do everything in the office, the way we deal with our clients, the way we build it, the, we built a team, uh, a really amazing team. We're like 40, 45 people at Fuse and everything I'm going to show you is really a testament to, to everybody at Fuse. Um, we've had to design um, you know, the way we create partnerships. We've had to design the, the, the business side of, um, of, of simply how to do business uh, because a conventional uh, approach um, in design for us seemed actually very not creative, not designed. In this madness of being creative with everything, um, um, you know, I think, I think we've um, we found a method, and rather rather than a method, it's more like a set of principles. So the first thing I would say is to start with questions, not answers. If you get a brief from anybody, from marketing or from business, the brief contains all the answers. What we like are briefs that are very very open. This is the example of a project that we've done with Puma. They came to us because they had a perfectly functioning shoebox. There was nothing wrong with it. The logistics engineers in Germany loved it. Um, from a branding standpoint, you could see it a mile away, it's bright red. But the question was, what else could we do? How could we make it better? How could we, you know, we're, Puma came to us and said, we're shipping 80 million shoes a year. How are we gonna think of this differently. And honestly, they had no idea whether there would be a solution at the end, um, whether um, the, 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 you know, the new ideas would be small shifts, small implementations, or whether they could be groundbreaking ones. And you know, in starting with that question, what we did is we actually, we didn't have an answer either. We had no clue what to do. I mean, it seemed very efficient. It seemed like it was, you know, working just as intended. It's actually mesmerizing to watch this video over and over and over. <laughs> and we continued to do this research. I mean, we went to uh, manufacturing facilities. We went to uh, distribution centers. We went to logistics centers. We went to retail shops. We went to the back rooms of retail shops. We went to all these places. This is incredible. This is an automated uh, robot that will pick anything out of all these little cubbies where different shoe models are located. That is also mesmerizing. We can watch this over and over. <laughs> so after doing all this research, what we figured is on the scale of 80 million shoe boxes, a change would be dramatic. And so we looked at all the phases that the shoebox goes through, and um, we focus on the earlier parts, production, and distribution, and logistics. We focus on, on reduction. We got to about 65% less materials used in our solution, 60, 65% of reduced energy uh, to, to make the shoebox. And the, you know, the solution is really this recycled PET material, uh, fabric material, that holds in place a non-structural piece of cardboard. The cardboard couldn't live by itself within the kind of uh, environment that it has to go through. It's, it's completely recycled material, as thin as can be, and then the fabric around it kind of holds it together. The combination of these two materials created the kind of sustainability story that has, is now sort of the anchor of uh, Puma Safe, which is a very wide platform that Puma has um, towards moving the company towards sustainability. You know, a lot of design and sustainability in the eco space demands out of the consumer a vow of poverty. And I don't think that works. Consumers want better solutions, whether they're green or not. They want them to be lower cost, whether they're green or not. Um, they, want it, they, they want the experience to be better. The, you know, they, they, consumers aren't going to go for you know, the, the something that is, isn't truly redesigned in a way that makes the experience better. Why change if it's not gonna be better on the other side? So, deliver more, not less is a principle that we've used, that we use through all of our projects. So it, it had to sort of fall within these very high level of constraints, the way it stacks, the way it's in a, in a storeroom, uh, the way it gets 
uh, carried along in, 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 in you know, distribution centers. Just as importantly, the, ex the consumer experience, um, we wanted to change that. We wanted to improve that. So when you go to a store, your shoes will come, I mean, uh, they actually come now, 50% of um, the 80 million shoes that Puma ships now already in this clever little bag. But you, you will get your shoe, you will take them home in the actual uh, packaging, which reduces the need for the big vinyl plastic bags. But what happens after that is we felt, well, let's, let's create a future for the relationship between the consumer and, and the box. So there is actually a whole set of retail and online implementations around, you know, what can you do with a clever little bag after it's used? There's lots and lots of examples online and a whole community around and a whole level of excitement that, that Puma never thought would happen through the shoebox. I mean, all the energy is in the shoes, but suddenly the consumer is engaged, is participating to, um, to the sustainability effort. If you can see here on the left, there is a big piece of plastic around this T-shirt. This is the way everything is shipped out of China. Every piece of garment has to be individually wrapped in plastic. I mean, it's, it's really disheartening. It's an it's a, it's a import-export uh, law coming out of China. You need to be able to see the labels or Cambodia or all, all those places. Um, but, and we really struggled with that part of the project. You know, how are we going to... We, we couldn't change the laws, but a breakthrough after a couple of weeks of working on this uh, from one of our designers were, was, let's just uh, fold the t-shirt one more time. <laughs> so the bag is half of what it used to be. I think we live in such a fast-changing world that there's very few existing paradigms that are still um, you know, that we can rely on, that, are, that, that, that we can't challenge. So creating your own theories of what could work and testing that physically, testing that experientially, um, all the tools that we have now in our hands as designers uh, allow us to do this. We can go out there and prove our own points. To prove an idea that has great merit, um, you know, we go out there and we, we do exactly that. We put questions up on the board, you know, can the same principle used to suspend bridges be applied to a chair? This was an effort in thinking about how we would drastically reduce the amount of materials um, used in a chair product. And this was also an open question from Herman Miller. Is it possible to create a chair with all of the performance criteria that you expect out of the Herman Miller brand? High design, high performance, great ergonomics, design for the environment. Is it possible to match that but at about half or less the price of current production? And so our theory is that by using a, a radically different structure, similar to bridges, we could get there. And all the first sort of iterations of sketches aren't about aesthetics. They're really about principles. Principles, you know, we're trying to, to prove. And the reason why I'm sharing this is because, you know, so much of design is still about making. It's still about drawing. It's still about sketches. These are, these are full-size drawings of the back of the chair. And when I tell people that what's, what's in this little animation and video is about 3 or 4% of the production of the things that took place, um, of the amount of prototypes and drawings that we created to get to the final solution of the sail chair, they're amazed. And I'm amazed too. I mean, I'm, I'm overwhelmed just looking backwards. But I think it's very, very important that we remain true designers while we have theories, while we, while we uh, intervene in business at much higher levels than we used to that we still understand that the way to get there, the way to get to a solution to a breakthrough is still very much about the designer's work. A lot of it happens by hand. Um, in fact, you know, we built about 30 to 40 prototypes in-house. Every single one of them is uglier than the next. But I can promise you that every single one was like, the whole team was jumping up and down because every single one of these prototypes, and there's many more, was a proof point, was a place where we said, oh, this works. Let's, let's try it this way. Let's add this. Let's add that. Let's break it. And, and yet, always more drawings, more, um, more experimentation with materials, with structures. The breakthroughs that we came up there with uh, became a principle, be became this notion of uh, eco-dematerialization 
taking materials out of everything. You saw here, even just on the handle and the side handle, we went from 100% to um, half the amount of material. Um, so sort of continuing the process from left to right here, where you see how things get hollowed out. And the, and the, the principle of eco-dematerialization is less materials means less weight, means less cost, means less carbon footprint. It's sort of a win, 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 win uh, type of situation to arrive to the sale chair, spreading these ideas across a whole collection of products. 360 degree design is really key. That means being everywhere, being at the incredible manufacturing facilities, being there when things work and being there when things don't work to solve them and resolve them. But it also means taking things into, for us, into the space of communication. How do you explain um, your work, how do you present it? Um, and so we m we've, we've moved from being industrial designers to being, um, to, to really communicating about our work, whether it's graphic design, packaging, um, in, in being very conscious about the fact that what we do is we create the iconography that signifies the change. We create the iconography that becomes um, remembered and that becomes, um, that, that carries the idea forward. Um, in, in, in every project that we do. Another really, really important criteria is if you want to do this 360 degree work, we really needed to rethink the business model. This is in partnership with my uh, business partner, Mitch Pergola. You know, the typical business model is you get a fee and the only way you're going to make money is if you finish the project faster than, you know, the amount of hours you quoted um, or at least on time. Um, both, of the, both of these things are hard, but this is really a business model that, you know, I think high school kids could, um, could run. Because we had to work in such a long-term kind of fashion, because we were spreading our work over really years of collaboration uh, with companies, we needed to create a, a business model that would encompass this long-term view. Um, we wanted to be stakeholders. We wanted to be partners in these firms. Um, and, you know, a stakeholder isn't, isn't a short-term hire. And that was, uh, that became a key for us. Now we have about 15 of these companies we work with. Probably the most known and visible one is our partnership with, with Jabon, um, the Bluetooth headset company. Our latest little fun phenomenon, which is the Jambox, this sort of portable wireless speaker, which has appeared all around the world and has been this, um, this incredible uh, success. It's not just creating the product. In our case, it's been also to create the, the advocacy and um, you know, the, the, um, the excitement around the notion of wireless uh, speakers and how they work. Um, no need for power or no need for audio cables. This is an installation in Milan, much more of, a, of an art presentation of the project. So there's no wires running to these, and yet all these speakers were blasting. And this is what happens when you do these kind of things. It becomes extremely popular. People start hanging out, both physically, obviously, but also online. So with little to no marketing budgets, I think this is how design you know, will make a difference. We're a few weeks from launching a completely new category of products in the health space with Jawbone. This is the UP bracelet. And there is an application, and it will, it will be a very exciting moment because you'll monitor your activity, and you'll monitor your sleep, and you'll share that with all the people you want to share it with. The app work and the web work and the realm of everything that we, that we do, from VIP packaging to retail places to communications and branding. But that's only possible if you have this 360-degree approach and if you have a partnership in place um, uh, with those kind of clients. And so the last couple of days, I, I just created this, not a great diagram yet, but, but you know, this notion that every bit of the creative process is a separate entity. Um, a lot of companies hire different people for every one of these different tasks. Uh, people are rebriefed, and honestly, all they want to do is change whatever was done before. Um, <coughs> and and you know, th this, this approach really doesn't doesn't work anymore in my opinion. You need to be able to handle not every single one of these things, but you need to be able to at least view it in this way and be a participant, if not the, the main execution, but a participant to all these different things. So I really see um, now that all these different elements, your strategy, your marketing, your, 
your products, um, your communications kind of feed back onto themselves and constantly has to have to be, you know, re-looped, recycled um, to create the right, um, you know, the right outcomes. And so we've done this with a few companies. Pact, this is a, not in technology, this is an underwear uh, company that we worked with. Every six weeks we do a different uh, line, a different graphic on uh, men's and women's underwear, and it's done with um, different nonprofits, um, different nonprofits um, around the world that we work with, from the Sierra Club to Creative Growth. This was done with the Sierra Club. It's, uh, it's an anti coal campaign, and it was coordinated in a way that it would be very fun, cool underwear, but <laughs> students would also strip down and protest. Um, the fact that uh, about a hundred plus universities and college campuses used cold firing plants to bring power to, to the campus. So uh, it's actually already changed. A number of campuses have, uh, have moved towards different, um, different solutions. So there is about 15 companies that we have these partnerships with from Mission Motors, motorcycles, underwear, beverage, technology, and vibrators. Do better is this whole space. As I said before, we all know that design is a key element of business and the ROI you know, on design has widely been demonstrated um, in the market. Um, and, but in, in my opinion, and for the last six or seven years, we've been heavily invested in what I believe is that design can do a lot more. For me, you know, design is a way to give to Mexican school children a pair of free eyeglasses which allows them to see better, to learn better. That's the name of the nonprofit. And design is a way to make those same kids participate in the process of design. They choose the shapes and colors of the, of the, of the glasses um, to express who, you know, who they are. Um, it's a way to create a manufacturing and logistics system that results in a $7 price point for these glasses, including lenses, frames. Very, very robust eyeglasses made of a material that uh, won't break even when you bend them backwards. These kids get over the stigma that is very prevalent in Mexico and really all over the world that glasses are a handicap. These kids at this distribution were running around the schoolyard saying, I am unique, I am unique. They were getting something truly unique and an expression of, of who they are. And to me, design is also a way to solve societal stigmas and possibly lives. This is the, the New York City condom. You know, how do you get people to talk about condoms as AIDS and pregnancy prevention? You know, with a new brand and these beautiful uh, dispensers that we created, design is a way to create a dialogue between people, whether at a New York dance club or at a bodega on 105th Street. The New York City condom, you know, is really a pioneering program, which when we started working with them, they, they were distributing 9 million condoms throughout New York. Um, in, in sort of standard um, uh, pink sort of packages and in, in these um, glass bowls. And by the time you know, we, we launched a new system, which included the Spencers, which included a, the new brand, they're distrib they've distributed 39 million condoms every year uh, since launch. So the kind of ROI I'm talking about um, in business is exactly the same kind of thing we can do in the nonprofit space. The $100 laptop is in 40 plus countries. There's 3 million kids that are using the laptop today. From Africa to Mongolia, and in Uruguay, every child in school has one. Every single child uh, between the age of six and 18 has a laptop. So because design is the way that we create icons that are, that are sort of so visible in, in, in the culture, Uruguay even made a stamp uh, about it. And uh, in Peru, we have 900,000 laptops in the hands of kids. I believe that design is universal. This is the way my nephew, Anthony, begged me to send him one. He's in Switzerland. And very, very soon, we're going to present the uh, tablet version. We're, we've been in heavy development on that. So look for what you want that everyone else wants. As I said before, you know, we have to create our own theories. We also have to sort of look at the world as if it were anew every morning. Um, and, and that means um, looking at certain problems and addressing them uh, in ways that, are, that nobody else is. Riding bicycles around the neighborhood is, was really fun when you were a kid. And then your life became a lot more complicated, um, you know, with 
children and work and stuff um, became a lot more complicated. You have to carry a lot more things. So we thought for our own, for our own self, for the studios, um, which has to kind of ride around to shops and the neighborhood and, um, and, and, um, and go to clients and bring presentations, et cetera, et cetera, we thought, what about a bike that is like a pickup truck, focused on the neighborhood? So we have integrated lighting and integrated cargo, and we can put all kinds of different things in there. I can balance like this because it's a three wheel, it's a tricycle. Um, so in conclusion, you know, whether we're reducing materials uh, and energy consumption on a project like Puma, um, or you know, creating the logistics that allow for 350,000 kids to, to get eyeglasses um, and, and for them to design them and wear them. Um, I think what good design does best is accelerate the adoption of new ideas. And what the world wants is to experience these new ideas for themselves. Arguably, um, American design today is better received than our foreign policy. <clears throat> People crave and admire you know, what Twitter or the iPhone does for them. And, you know, whether, whether it's Palestine or Venezuela. Um, and I think if we continue to do what we do, entre entrepreneurs and designers, uh, and we continue to understand that, um, you know, that, that, that partnerships um, are, are the sort of the right way forward, where designers are going to bring their own notions and I think a very sort of uh, human-centric notion to, to business, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll cement that reputation um, that we are, I believe that we can be, as designers, the best ambassadors of our culture. That's it. Thank you. <laughs>